Mom, Dad, I humbly suggest you save some money and shop Amazon for back to school. It's for my growth, meaning my body's growing at an alarming rate. And clothes you buy me this year will be very small very soon. Plus, the clothes I love today will be out of style tomorrow. But at least your wallet doesn't have to be my fashion victim if you shop low prices for school at Amazon. Hopefully this is helpful. Amazon. Spend less, smile more. It's Wednesday Wonders, science fiction and fantasy on the Mutual Audio Network. The following audio drama is rated G for general audiences. The following program is rated PG. Please be advised that what you are about to hear may contain mature themes, mild uses of bad language, and some instances of violence which may be unsuitable for younger listeners. Parental guidance is suggested. This is a presentation from Dream Realm Enterprises, where dreams are our reality. Oh, my sweet Briscoe, it's such a romantic night. I'm so happy you brought me out here to see this. Wait for it. Wait for it. There! Yep, there goes son number 10. Oh, Briscoe, it's so romantic. I feel so cozy with you, watching all of these suns explode. If only we could, I don't know, kiss. Huh? What's that? It's something humans do. It looks so sweet and romantic when they do it. How do they do it? They put their mouths together and try to suck each other's tongues down each other's throats. Sounds disgusting. But I think I like the fun of that. <laughs> <laughs> Me too, Frisco. How I'd like to do that with you right now. Hello there. How are you two tonight? <gasps> what the? Well, sorry to have startled you, but I couldn't help but overhearing your fascinating conversation. Let me introduce myself. I'm a... Shush! Whoever or whatever you are, please be quiet. I'm trying to spend some quality time with my Briscoe. I was just trying to tell you that I can make all of your wish. Shh! Please, leave us alone. We're having a romantic night. Look, I can make your night even more special. If only you'd let me tell you that I am a wish... Shut up! Please! Now, where were we, Briscoe? Huh? I thought we were right here. Oh, Briscoe, you're so cute. I could just squeeze you to death. If only we weren't mere machines. If only we could kiss like the humans. If only we could cuddle. Oh, I wonder what it would be like if all us bots were flesh and blood instead of cogs and steel. If only we had hearts instead of gears. Oh, I wish we were humans, even for just one night. <clears throat> Your wish is my command. What? It's what I've been trying to say. I'm a wishing well, and you should always be careful what you wish for, because, as I said, your wish is my command. From this point forward, all the bots on Planet Bob will become human for the next 12 hours. So there. Plastic robots, they never listen. <laughs> Oh my! What, what's that sensation I'm feeling? Suddenly I feel very cold. Which is odd, since I have a built-in heating unit. Ah! I'm... I'm human! I'm naked! I'm human and naked! I feel weird. And... And you look weird. Um... Kika? Yes, Briscoe? What are those knobs on your chest plate? Knobs? <gasps> Oh, Briscoe, these aren't knobs. We're we're naked. <laughs> naked? Oh, I'm naked. Briscoe, you're human too. <laughs> Cover yourself up, Briscoe. I can't talk to you when you're looking. Sorry, <laughs> but I I I kind of like it. Hmm. You really like looking at me like this. Well, I don't know why, but uh, yeah, I do. <laughs> I, I, I can't help it. Kika, you're a knockout. Hey, I actually know what that means now. This is fantastic. You're smart, and I can breathe. I can run and jump and skip and dance and 
feel. <laughs> I can fall in love. I can do anything I want. I'm human. But how did this happen, Briscoe? How did we become human? I'll bet you it's one of Dr. Grease Monkey's nefarious schemes. Well, if it is, it's backfired. Because I love being human. And you know, I can even get used to being naked. Especially since we're naked together. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Zippity doo. <laughs>"You are listening to Robots of the Company, episode number 405, The Pinocchio Effect, written by Vince Staten." And that's a game of cards, Popsicle, mon ami? Not a chance, Sinks. You've wiped me clean out. I don't have a single credit to my name. Then we shall not play for money. No, we shall play strip poker. Strip poker? You must be out of your tiny French mind, Sphinx. You're an Eiffel short of a tower if you think I'm going to play strip poker with you. No, mon ami, not with me, but with me against them. Them who? Hello, boys. <laughs> I'm Bim. And I'm Bo. And as you can see, we're bikini models. Who? Wow. Yeah. I'm definitely up for a game of strip poker with these babes. Take a seat, ladies. And of course we cannot possibly lose, because we're bots. We have no clothing to shed, and no nakedness to display. Sphinx, you're a genius. Excellent. It's about time someone noticed. Popsicle, nothing can go wrong now. <laughs> What the... Merd. Somehow we've both just become human. And on top of that, we're both naked. This is the strangest game of strip poker I've ever played. And what is up with my voice? This is so not fair. Oh. So does this mean we win? Yeah. What do we get? Bo. Oh. Right. <laughs> well, what now, Sphinx? A game of put your clothes on, Parcheesi? Uh, GD, let me ask you something plainly. Where the hell are we? Well, that's the one question I was hoping you wouldn't ask, Simtron. You see... Because we've been thrashing through this horrible jungle for seven days now. Uh, in fact, I think we're... Ever since we crashed our dinghy into this, um, tropical island, we've managed to get lost, glimpsed some kind of terrible monster, seen a UFO, and even managed to spot a polar bear. A polar bear, for goodness sake. So where are we? We're lost. Again. Well, thank you for clearing that up. I would never have guessed. Honestly. Oh, how are we supposed to find this amazing treasure trove if we can't even find ourselves? Oh, quit whining, Simtron. Somewhere out there is a treasure beyond our wildest dreams. Sure, we've had a few setbacks. Sure, we've temporarily lost our way. Sure, we've been anally probed by weird-looking aliens and ski masks, but we still have the map, and we still have our wits. Well, in your case, half-wits. Oh, how very droll. And what's more, we have absolutely nothing better to do while we're stuck on this rotten planet. So what do you say? Are you going to help me find this treasure, or what? Okay, okay. You make a good case, and we've come this far. I'm in. Let's go get stinking rich. Excellent. Now let's go this way. Uh, actually, on second thought, let's try the other way. God, I have skin, I have hair, I have teeth, I have oh, bits. Wow. Hey, Zimtron. Oh, crap. Here we go again. 
Huh? Never mind. Say, Zimtron, where are you? Are you hiding behind that hideously ugly, mutated, troll-like thing that makes you sick just to look at it? I am that, quote, hideously ugly, mutated, troll-like thing that makes you sick just to look at it. Zimtron, is that really you? Unfortunately, yes. <laughs> Gee, tough luck, Zimmy. Gotta say, that's a weird place for an extra arm. Where? Um, oh, oh, there. Uh, actually, that's um, <clears throat> not an extra arm. Oh, uh, uh, <laughs> you're right. I guess that compensates for the hunchback. Well, you know, looks aren't everything, Zimmy. Well, that's easy for you to say. You look like a million space bucks. So do you, Zimtron. All green and wrinkly. Yeah. <laughs> oh, shut up, Genie. <laughs> oh, look, damn your work! I see you haven't lost your delicate touch there, Boffin. Well, I think I've got the guidance systems working at least, Captain. Really? That's great. If only we had a working ship to try it out on. No need. We can test it regardless how the ship works. Okay then, let's see it in operation. Well, here goes. Oh, I think it might need a bit more work, Boffin. <laughs> yeah, I know. I'm such rubbish. <laughs> What in Santacon's jingle bells happened to me? Come to that, what the Sam Hill has happened to you? Oh my! That was some kind of metamorphic energy wave that permeated the holistic fabric of reality and, and has altered our molecular structures from a processed computation matrix to an organic based carbon compound. Huh? How many times do I have to tell you that techno babble is off limits, Boff? Now give it to me again in understandable terms. Well, in understandable terms, we've been magically transformed into human beings. Naked human beings, it would seem, sir. Now, was that so hard? Wait a minute. Naked human beings? Oh boy. We need to call all the bots to order to have a meeting to get to the bottom of this. Come on, Boffin, and try to cover yourself. That extra arm is not nearly as attractive as the other two. Um, Captain? I think I need to explain a few more things to you. What in the name of Dr. Grease Monkey's butt flesh has happened to us? Yeah, how do we get so fleshy and filled with raging hormones? Uh, uh, <coughs> uh I feel sick. Man, I have a temperature, and I ache all over. Being human is just one long process of getting progressively more ill. Ill until you die, 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 die in agony. No, it isn't. Being human is wonderful. I feel so alive, vibrant, attractive, amazing. Yes, well... I feel like shit. Is that what humans are supposed to feel like? Did you ever vote Republican? Because that would explain it. You know, as a matter of fact, I did. There must be some explanation for all this. I mean, weird and crazy stuff just doesn't happen like this for absolutely no re... Wait, what am I saying? We're robots of the company. Weird and crazy stuff happens to us all the time. We demand answers. Once I was an exquisite ice pig, cool and sharp. Now I find that I am hairy, rude and smelly. Well, what do you expect? You're a Frenchman. You are insulting me, you insolent slob. Yes, I'm insulting you. What are you going to do about it? This! Ow! That... Right! That, that does it! Take this! Ow! What did you do that for? Sorry, I was aiming for Sphinx. Well, here's one back at you, fat boy. Uh, oh, how to behave yourselves. Uh, why, oh, I try wanted not to hurt each other. Watch that. Oh, 
Okay, now we have that out of our system. Look, we faced more bizarre situations than this and pulled through unscathed. Well, relatively unscathed. We can get through this. Together, we can find the answers and reach an understanding. Discover the truth behind the Pinocchio effect. The what? The Pinocchio effect. You know, when an inanimate object becomes a living, breathing human being. You just made that up, haven't you? Yeah, it sounds pretentious and derivative to me. I feel sick. See? Even Boffin can see how stupid it is. <laughs> I just thought the Pinocchio effect would be a logical name for our predicament. <clears throat> uh, Captain, I thought I was the one who... Shut up, Boffin. You're sick, remember? Anyway, the Pinocchio effect it is. Oh, my electronic gods, how stupid. Well, I like it. Thank you for the vote of confidence, Kika. Now, to return to what I was saying, I think we have two invaluable resources to help us with our current predicament. First, we have the computer. Oh. Oh. Oh, man, come on. Oh. Now, now, let's give the old computer a chance. It may be a deeply sarcastic and irritating, but it does have a highly sophisticated data processing system that could give us all the answers we need. Right, let's try this. Computer, we desperately need your help. A fatal exception 403 has occurred at ROTC 4.3. What? What does that mean, computer? We need you more than ever. <laughs> this program has performed an illegal operation and will shut down. No, not now. You, you, you can't do this. In other words, you've done something unbelievably stupid, you jumped up ape, and you need to restart your system and get help from somebody with half a brain cell who actually knows what the hell he's doing. And though I have the technical know-how to help you out of your predicament, I simply can't be bothered. Have a nice... No. No, on second thought, off! Well, that was helpful. What was the second thing you said would be an invaluable asset to us? Boffin? Oh. Oh. Ah, oh, come on, oh. now. <sighs> Boffin, we need your help. <coughs> uh, need. Uh, need. M medical e equipment. Uh, hey, great idea. You think up some medical equipment to reverse the Pinocchio effect and turn us all back into bots. <coughs> No, need medical equipment to make me feel better. I'm dying here. Don't think there's any way to reverse this process. We're all screwed. Swell. Hey, thanks a bunch, Boffin. And can it with the hypochondriac stuff. Nerds, they're always the weedy, sickly ones. Well, Pudge, your great ideas have got us absolutely nowhere. Yes. Way to go, Captain. Well, at least I'm trying to do something. Otherwise, we could all be stuck as humans for the rest of our lives. However long that is in human years. Holy cow! It's the moment I've dreamed of for the past seven years. Hubba, hubba, hubba. Woohoo! Yeah, baby. Squeak, you do realize you're... Naked, right? Yeah, sure. So what? Hey, Squeak. Um, nice, uh, implants. Oh, no, honey. These are me. 100% natural. Hubba, hubba, hubba. If I were metal, I'd be melting right now. In fact, I think I'm melting anyway. Calm down, boys. It's only me and my sons. And you can stop saluting. Oh, forget it. They can't hear you. I think they're blind and deaf to everything right now, Squeak. But, you know, I have to be honest. You're so hot. I think you're even having an effect on me. Well, that's surprising. Tell me about it. 
Um, Kika? Um, Kika, dear. Huh? Kika? What? Oh, sorry. It seems we have a little situation here. And if I overheard correctly, you guys are looking for a solution. Huh? I know you said something, Squeak. Shush, everyone. I'm staring. Forget it, Squeak. They've finally gotten what they've always wanted. <laughs> In their dreams, maybe. And yours, too, it seems. Huh? You can stop saluting me any time, GD. Oh, uh, yeah. Uh, sorry about that. Oh, it's all right. Believe me. <laughs> and as for you, Zimtron, I'm impressed. But too bad about the hideous troll thing. Uh, th thanks for noticing. Um, you can stop staring now. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Sorry. So, where were we? Um, Putch? Putch! Huh? Oh, oh, sorry. Uh, I order you to all stop staring immediately. And I'm ordering myself, too. Oh. 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 Right. Now, you have some information to impart, Squeak. My now human son, Derek, has some info to impart to you all. Yes. Derek? I do wish you'd cover yourself, Mother. But we both know you enjoy the attention too much. Mommy pretty. That is so wrong on so many levels, Chango. <clears throat> but um, anyway, I digress. The truth of the matter is, you are all stuck like this. Listen. If that truly is the case, if we are stuck permanently as humans, then I, for one, would be happy. I love being human. Briscoe and I could settle down and marry. We could rise each morning and take in the beautiful sunrise with human eyes. And so could the rest of you. All of you. There is no way I'm marrying Briscoe. That's not what I meant, Sphinx, and you know it. Anyway, just think of all the potential you have. All that it means to be human. You can smell the sublime perfume of flowers. You can taste. You can drink and get drunk. You can touch and be touched. You can feel the warm comfort of a hug. Human minds are not slaves to logic. You can make leaps of wild imagination. You can do anything. We can do anything. Because we're human. You know, when you put it like that, it doesn't sound so bad. Yeah, I especially like that bit about getting drunk. <laughs> and getting touched doesn't sound too bad either. Um, Squeak, you want to come over here and sit with me for a while? Forget about it. Kika's right. Being human could be the greatest experience of them all. I am definitely with you on this, Kika. I want to stay human. I have hated every damned second of being human. And I will hate every other damned second until I stop being human. Oh, then it sounds as if you've really got the hang of it already, Zimtron. Hello there, Sphinx. Popsicle. Hello again, sweetie. We. Oui, I want to remain human also. Oh, yeah. That works for me, too. Oh, pretty. We brought our friend Geek with us. She's a bit of a nerd, but she's also incredibly sexy and a nurse. Oh, look at this poor little one here. Oh, um, hello. I'm Boffin. She's so cute. Well, hello, Boffin. I'm Geek, and I can see that you are in need of some tender, loving care. <laughs> Oh, I am. I am. Oh, boy. Great. It seems we're all happy to be human. I'm not. Apart from Zimtron, that is. So I reckon everything has worked out nicely for us all. Finally, a happy ending. I hate to be the bearer of bad news, but... Uh... <laughs> all the parts of the planet are become human for 20 hours. Hey, 
What just happened? Oh no, we've changed back. Oh, oh we're bots again! I guess normality has been restored. I was trying to tell you that you were stuck being you in just for a little while longer. But no one wanted to listen to me. I'm feeling so much better. We, oui, it is cool to be an ice pig once more. Though I must admit, there seem to be certain advantages to being humans that I was looking forward to exploring. Well, all I want to do is explore being back to normal. Oh, the relief! I can finally look at myself in the mirror again. Not since you voted Republican. What happened again? Oh, Briscoe, I think I kind of liked you better as a human being. A what? Oh, hey, Zimtron. You look a little dusty. Let me use my feather duster to take care of that for you. Uh, no, no, that's that's quite all right, Briscoe, my boy. I'd much rather get to know these naked bikini models just now. Don't look so down, Kika. Everything's going to be all right, you know. Oh, yeah? How do you know so much? I have a genius for a son, remember? And I know how this all started. I could show you, if you like. And then maybe I could show you... other things. Hmm. <laughs> you have finally been listening to Robots of the Company, episode number 405. What took you so damn long, guys? The Pinocchio Effect, written by... Vince Staten, but starred in order of appearance. Danny Cutler as Kika, Kyle Boers as Briscoe, Jonathan Patrick Russell as The Wishing Well, Jim Barber as Sphinx, Daryl Looney as Popsicle, Cookie Coletti as Bim, Razan Hayward as Bo, Ellie Hirschman as GD, Jeff Niles, Man of the Hour, as Zimtron, Shane Harris as Boffin, Joe Thomas as Putch, Steve Anderson as the computer, Sally Wicked as Squeak, Jeff Niles, what a guy, as Derek, Jonathan Patrick Russell as Chongo, with Stefania Lindenbaum as Geek. The Robots of the Company theme tune was composed and performed by Daryl Looney. Who else? The incidental music was provided by Kevin McLeod. The associate producer was Vince Staten. Post-production editors were Jonathan Patrick Russell, and that dude of all dudes, Jeff Niles. The sound designer, script editor, executive producer, and director was Jonathan Patrick Russell. The series, Robots of the Company, was created by Jonathan Patrick Russell, and the copyright is held by Dream Realm Enterprises. Any rebroadcast or reproduction of this program without the expressed written permission of Dream Realm Enterprises is strictly prohibited. We interrupt our regularly scheduled credits to bring you this update. We now come to you from DreamRealmSite.com. So join us there on the web from now on. That is all. Now back to your regularly scheduled credits. Take it away, me. How many times must I beg and plead for you to email us at darkbuilding1 at yahoo.com, you lazy bum? We were naked as a jaybird during the making of this audiogram. Join us next time as the robots of the company get lost in time and space. Well, I wish they'd get lost. In an incredibly exciting episode entitled Time and Again. This is the creditor, as always, asking you to stay tuned. This has been a production of Dream Realm Enterprises. Copyright 2008. All rights reserved. This is Jack Ward from the Mutual Audio Network and from all of us here, the entire United Artists of Audio, I want to thank everyone who has supported us. Listeners and producers, writers and actors, musicians and graphic artists who make audio drama and audio fiction. You inspire us all. And thanks for making a home here on Mutual, where we listen and imagine together.